It's 10 after the hour. Now, barista is an Italian term for professional coffee maker. If you're an avid drinker, why not learn to create your own favorite specialty drinks like the big name coffee shops, but you might be able to do it at home. We're going to join Ashley Kirkland back at Dead River Coffee with more. Morning, Ashley. Good morning, Vicki. For some people, that first cup of coffee in the morning is similar to brushing their teeth. They got to have it. So we're going to show you guys how to make that great coffee right in your own home. Right now, we're at Dead River Coffee, and I'm joined once again with Sarah Reynolds, who is going to talk to us about making a great cup of coffee. She's getting the stuff pre-stirred for us. Sarah, you busy there? <laughs> What's the difference? Now, first, we're going to do an espresso, actually. So what is the difference between espresso and coffee? So espresso is one and a half to two ounces of um, highly concentrated coffee and the way that's done is through high pressure in the espresso machine and high temperature. So it takes about 25 to 30 seconds to extract a double shot of espresso. Okay, so, whoa. <laughs> so what's the next step when you're making a great espresso? And also, can people do this at home without all of the big machinery that they see here? Yeah, they do sell uh, home espresso machines, and some of them are really great, and some of them are not so great. So it's just about finding a machine that works for you <laughs> and that has that appropriate temperature control and uh, pressure control. Okay, and I think I double teamed you with the questions there. So what's the next step in making the espresso? So right now I'm just steaming the milk and that's just putting hot uh, steam water into the milk and it's just frothing the surface to make it silky smooth. Mm -hmm. And then we'll uh, come over here. Now I know Vicki was interested in how do you get the milk to be so frothy at your own home? Just by applying uh, steam to the surface of the milk and you'll hear that uh, whispering sound and that's putting air bubbles at the very top and making that foam. Nice. And she even made one of the nice fancy designs that you'll see at the restaurants. And so what's the next step? I'll taste this and then you can get us started with a regular cup of coffee. Sure. So over here I'm going to make a Chemex coffee and this is a three cup Chemex. And I have my pre-ground uh, coffee beans that I did just a minute ago. And you want a fairly fine grind so you just go ahead and pour that into the filter. And I do about two grams of coffee for every fluid ounce of water. So this Chemex is a uh, three cup Chemex, which is European cup, so it's about five ounces a cup. So I'm going to do around uh, 15 ounces of water. And are pressers better than brewers? Um, it all depends on personal taste, what you like better. French press tends to have a little bit of a stronger, more oily taste to the coffee. And this method has a cleaner, crisper taste because of the paper filter. And I know this looks like a lot of work, so how much time would it take someone at home? We all rush to work to kind of get this nice cup of espresso, cappuccino, or coffee done at home. It really doesn't take that much time at all, um, especially once you get used to it. It's just a matter of grinding up your beans, putting them in a filter, and pouring some hot water over the top. It's just a few minutes. It takes about three to four minutes for this to finish brewing. Then you have a couple cups of coffee. All right. Well, thank you, Sarah. And a little bit later, Vicki, she's still brewing a nice cup of coffee. So we are going to taste that also. But a little bit later, we're going to talk about the different types of beans that they have down here at Dead River. They have a selection that is really great, a great variety for people to uh, test out. And I'm going to finish off my cappuccino here and get a little spunk in my day. So <laughs> I'll take it back to you guys. Ashley Kirkland reporting live in Marquette, TV6 News. All right. Thanks, Ashley. She's got the coffee. We have the Oreos here. All right. That's <laughs> now, does she know an espresso has more caffeine? I don't know. I, I think. Welcome back. Well, baristas don't simply make coffee, but with skill and passion, they create delicious works of art. Our own Ashley Kirkland has been learning how to become a barista. Now let's check back in with her. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, Sam. I've been making so much coffee. I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. My espresso got me all hyped up. I'm just joking. <laughs> I heard Sean saying that espressos have uh, a lot more caffeine than coffee. That's actually not true. Uh, the espresso that I had was about two ounces, which is equivalent to an eight ounce cup of coffee, which is just your regular size of American cup of coffee. So it's not true. You won't have extra caffeine. Right now I'm at Dead River Coffee uh, once again. And right now I'm with Dylan Trost, who is going to talk to us more about the beans that they have here to roast. Dylan, you guys have a great selection here. Where do you get all of your beans? Well, our beans come from agents who search the world for <laughs> coffee. They come to us in green bean form like this, and we throw it in the roaster, and they come out something like this. 
Okay, and so what, take us through the process of how you roast your coffee. How we roast the coffee. So as I mentioned, it comes in green bean form like this. Mm -hmm. We throw it in the roaster, um, and we drop it at a particular, it, it spins around in this drum. The coffee spins around in this drum, and it's getting heated up. And we drop it at a particular temperature that we uh, find best for this uh, particular bean. Okay. Yeah. Now, does the taste depend on how you uh, roast or brew your coffee? A roast. Taste depends on a lot of things. Where the coffee's from, how long we roast it. There's a lot of factors that play in there. Okay. And so you guys have coffee. You have your secret agents all over the world. Yeah. You got coffee from Kenya and Asia. What's the difference in taste depending on the country? Well, that that varies as well. The coffee is affected by what kind of climate it's grown in, okay. what altitude, what kind of soil it's grown in. There's a lot of stuff that plays in there. Okay. Um, so, like an example, we have an Ethiopian Sadamo tastes totally different from this Brazil right here. Mm -hmm. So what's your personal favorite? Ooh. I don't know, right now, I really like this Burundi. Well, I don't know, I think the Sadamo's my favorite. Sadamo. Yeah, that's, that's always been a, I've always been a big fan of those Ethiopian coffees. They're just super fruity and fun, and I really like those ones a lot. Okay, yeah. and like we said, brewing or roasting coffee, being your own barista, is kind of a form of an artwork. What's your what's your fascination with being a barista or roasting? A roaster, um, like how personal it is. You know, you can do so much with the coffee bean. It's just, it's fun. It's fascinating. It's interesting. You get to play with fire and smoke and all sorts of fun stuff like that. I don't know. It's just. <laughs> really personal and fun. I really get a lot from it. Well, thank you, Dylan. Thank and you. I never knew that coffee could be so informational. I've learned a lot here today. And so hopefully I can come back to the station and make a great cup of coffee 